Hi, I'm Dr. Cody Rawl. I'm a US Navy trained psychiatrist and I've been meditating and using neurotechnology for over 10 years to sharpen my mind as well as the minds of my clients. I can still remember some of the first times I had really deep meditative experiences. A lot of it happened after reading Becoming Supernatural by Dr. Joe Dispenza. This book introduced me to a lot of ideas that I hadn't been open to before I read the book, but his descriptions were so interesting that I decided to give them a try, in particular his blessing of the energy centers meditation. And I noticed that when I focused my attention on different areas in my body, for instance, there's the pineal gland in the middle of your head, I would feel this magnetic pull, like it was a little vortex pulling my attention in. And I just rode that wave and experienced joy and bliss that I had never had happen to me before during a meditation experience or during my whole life. So I realized these energy centers really do have a strong effect over your brain and mind when you focus on them in the right way. And I was really excited. I was like, this is the deep meditative state that I've been training for since I started meditation training five years prior. And during that meditation training, I had been using a new device called the Muse Headband, which used brain waves to help track your meditation sessions and give you scores at the end. So naturally, after learning the new technique, I was really excited. I grabbed my Muse Headband, I put it on, I thought, man, I can't wait for it to validate these deep meditative states that I'm experiencing. So I put it on, I cleared my mind during the calibration, and then I lightly focused on my breath to get the birds chirping and get the neurofeedback audio all calm. But the moment that I shifted my attention inwards, it's that intense focus feeling that I had experienced, the Muse headband went haywire. If you've ever used the Muse headband before, you know that when you lose focus on your breath, it tends to go from a calm scenery with birds chirping to a bunch of rain, wind, and chaos. I thought this device was supposed to measure deep meditative states. Why is it punishing me during the exact moment when I feel the most connected during my meditation that I've ever felt before? And that really confused me for several months. When I first started meditating, it was because I had heard someone online talking about it, and their technique was just literally sitting in front of a wall with their eyes open and expecting something to happen. Now, I did practice that for a couple of months and it was boring. I would just stare at a wall for 20 minutes. I did notice myself becoming very present at times, but really it was maybe one out of 20 sessions that I really felt anything at all. Normally it was just pure boredom, just trying to keep my mind clear and redirecting my thoughts to the wall when my attention wavered. So I got a little frustrated, and then when I went off to residency training, I met a colleague that introduced me to Headspace, which I thought was great. It was this online app that's still around today. It gives a great amount of structure to your experience, it teaches you how to harness mindfulness, and a lot of other tools and techniques that you can use to get started in meditation and keep you coming back for more. But over time, as I started to read more and more, I became totally fascinated by energy points, energy field awareness training, things that are traditionally called chakras, and cultivating awareness of subtle sensations so that I could bring my practice to a new level. And I was using Muse all along. As you know, Muse is a wearable EEG headband that gives you neurofeedback while you meditate. And I thought, hey, this is gonna be able to track my deep meditative experiences. And for mindfulness practice, it did work. If you focus on the breath without a whole lot of depth and you just calm your mind, the headband will reward you with chirping birds, which feels great and it helps you sharpen your mindfulness. But once I started layering in these advanced techniques, the system really just broke down. So a few months after I started getting frustrated with the headband because it wouldn't respond to these deep experiences that I was having, I interviewed someone that had been using the Muse headband along with their advanced meditative practice. Now this is someone who had been practicing for 20 years and when he shared his Mind Monitor data, it blew me away. Now Mind Monitor is a third party app that tracks your raw brainwaves so you can see what's going on without any of the neurofeedback 
and really break it down into different brainwave patterns. What he showed me was more diversity when it came to his meditative practice and the different brainwave states that were coming up. When he relaxed and did a mindfulness meditation, his alpha levels would go way up. And we knew that this is what the Muse headband was giving positive reward for with mindfulness practice. But he revealed to me that he had been doing advanced energy work for many years. And when he employed the technique with the Muse headband on, but using Mind Monitor, we saw that his beta and gamma shot way up on the graph. And you could just see in real time these faster brain waves just go up as he employed the technique. Now, some people online were arguing that maybe these were muscle contractions, but on his graphs, they were really isolated from other brainwave bands. Typically, if you've got muscle contractions, delta goes way up as well, but the beta and gamma were completely isolated from the delta. So I was like, these are real brain waves that are happening when he employs these advanced meditative techniques. And that's when it hit me. The, the Muse algorithm isn't built to respond to spikes in beta and gamma. It's really just rewarding higher levels of alpha to a certain extent. So I thought, well, maybe that's happening to me when I focused inwards towards that energy center in the third eye where the pineal gland is. Maybe I'm creating beta and gamma surges that are causing the muse to think that I'm distracted even though I'm feeling more connected and present than ever. And maybe that's why I was hearing all these storms instead of hearing the chirping birds that we all know of so well from the app. So I decided to test it on myself. I put on the muse, I fired up mind monitor and I ran my own experiments. And sure enough, when I did these intense energy center focused practices, my beta and gamma waves spiked. Now I will say that it wasn't as dramatic as my friend who had been practicing for 20 years, but it was clearly noticeable. And the more that I tested it, the clearer that it became that Muse was really good for rewarding alpha brainwave levels that come along with mindfulness meditation, but it does give you negative feedback if you get beta and gamma bursts during advanced meditative practices. In other words, it's not broken, it's just doing exactly what it was designed to do. And maybe I had been asking it wrong questions. I had been presenting it with the wrong information. And I think this actually layers into a discussion of how mindfulness is talked about in our culture overall. Because as I was getting into residency training, I noticed that the big trendy thing was practicing mindfulness. You would see it in magazines, you would see it in journals. You still see it a lot, but it was really trendy back then, especially for mental health providers teaching their patients how to do mindfulness training. Now, a lot of that was very simple, body scans, paying attention to your breath and being present. And listen, it was powerful. I think that it's a very good technique for lessening anxiety and panic, and it gives people and patients and customers a different tool set to manage their mental health. But what I noticed over the years is that because they didn't present much depth, it was all surface level, watch your thoughts, bring your mind back to your breath if it wanders. Because of that surface level description of meditation in the mindfulness training, what happened is that a lot of people that did mindfulness training in different programs didn't continue it afterwards. As long as there was no accountability for doing mindfulness training, they didn't incorporate it into their daily routine. There was no depth there. And it's the depth that has made me come back day after day for years. It's the depth that provides the nourishment to how I feel in my body and in my mind during the day that has made me literally addicted to the process. But I mean, can you blame them? I mean, in the hospital setting, you're supposed to be scientific and present things in an easily digestible form. And when you come at people with all the depth by saying, by the way, there are energy centers in a grid around your body. And if you learn how to tap in them correctly, you can create these advanced states where your brain waves light up into beta and gamma and create these experiences that feel profoundly spiritual and will make you feel more connected to your surroundings than you ever have before. <laughs> I think that would overwhelm most people. And so the message instead became just sit down, notice your breath and repeat. But the problem with that is that no one stuck with it long term because after the novelty of that wore off, you didn't feel nourishment, you didn't feel depth, you didn't feel 
that you were compelled to practice this thing every day. You didn't experience the bliss, clarity, and insight that actually made you want to make this a part of your lifestyle. They oversimplified it and they unintentionally set people up for boredom and burnout with the practice instead of a lifelong process of self-discovery. Now, I think that the Muse did a great thing. It added a layer of complexity and made meditation interesting to the point where people do continue to use the Muse headband, even if they are at more of a superficial level of mindfulness meditation. But I think what I've done on my channel is presented the fact that you can go deeper into meditation and that the Muse headband can be incorporated in a way with that that makes sense. Because it is measuring just one specific thing. It's calm mindfulness alpha. And as you know, that can definitely becomes a strength in the advanced practices, but you just have to know when and where to use it. Because once I realized this, everything sort of clicked into place. It was like mindfulness wasn't the entire meditation experience. It's part of the equation. It absolutely sharpens your ability to stay present with the meditation object and get drawn in. If you're using different energy grid centers, you'll develop what's called energy field awareness. That mindfulness, you get this feeling of these pulls in your mind space. And if you follow them, you really get these incredibly rich experiences. And Muse is fantastic for sharpening that mindfulness awareness. But if you stop there at the end of your Muse session, you're gonna miss out on what the richness of meditation can actually deliver to you. So over the years, I shaped a routine to respond to that. So number one, I like to meditate in the morning. So first I'll do some stretching and then I'll sit down on my meditation pad and do some really quick body scans just to check in on how my body and my mind are feeling. I cultivate a little bit of energy field awareness, but I'm not zeroing in on any one energy field center. I'm kind of just using my mindfulness to wake my brain up. And then I'll put the Muse headband on and I'll just clear my mind and do a regular calibration. And then I'll practice my mindfulness with the Muse headband for 10 to 15 minutes using the birds and the, the, the feedback to wake my brain up. And what that really is doing is not only increasing alpha in my brain, but it's also connecting different areas of my brain that need to be communicating to each other to cultivate presence and mindfulness. What that does is it gives me a solid baseline, a solid foundation. I have found time after time that if I prime with Muse before my advanced techniques, the advanced techniques go way better when I prime with the Muse. And I think that's because you're building your baseline of alpha. You're waking up the mindfulness areas of your brain, and you're also accountable for doing that for 10 to 15 minutes before you go into the other practices. It's like this accountability that keeps you in that mid-range state so that you can cultivate enough what I call meditative energy and presence to really harness them into the advanced practice later in the session. Because once the Muse meditation is done, I take the headband off and then I move into the deeper work. And that has to do with focusing on different points in and around my body in certain geometries that make you feel a different way, breathing into that geometry, doing a little mantra work, doing a little breathing to really cultivate and enhance and deepen that meditative feeling. And by structuring it this way, I get the best of both worlds. Muse gives me that discipline of mindfulness early in the training, and then I ride that momentum into more expansive practices that Muse really isn't built to measure. You can measure it with the Mind Monitor program because it's not gonna give you any negative feedback, but as far as the regular Muse app goes, it's really not designed to handle those bursts of beta and gamma. So to me, the regular Muse app is more of the warm up, not the ceiling of how deep you can get with your sessions. That being said, the Muse headband is fantastic for cultivating this mindfulness practice that will help you build on that. You'll get more energy field awareness. You'll get better attention for the more advanced practices. So for beginners, the Muse gives you some quick wins. It makes meditation mindfulness training more interesting because you can get these birds to chirp and you can learn to settle your attention and you get that positive feedback. You get scores at the end and that's very motivating. That's great training wheels at the beginning of learning how to meditate. And then if you're like me and you're more 
of an intermediate meditator, you can use Muse to create a strong baseline of mindfulness and presence before you practice the more advanced techniques. And even for you advanced meditators, I still think that if you prime with Muse and then step off into energy field awareness training and breathing practices, because you did that, you're gonna get more of that spiritual nourishment and you get more of those transcendent experiences that keep you coming back day after day. So if you're out there and you felt like Muse isn't working for you, it might be because you haven't structured things properly and you're asking it to measure something that it wasn't designed for. And trust me, the people that work at Muse are fantastic. They understand that there are different brainwave states when it comes to meditation. They need to keep the, the marketing simple so that people try the device out and get into meditation in the first place place. They don't want to overwhelm people. So it's great for mindfulness meditation training. I think in the future, we will have AI be able to adapt the algorithm to what meditative state you are in and help cultivate those deeper and richer experiences. But because the brainwave algorithms need to be set for mindfulness meditation, that's just where we're at for now. It is definitely an excellent tool. And with all the different biometrics that they're introducing, it has even more functions than just mindfulness meditation training. It's really at this point measuring the health of your brain. So you can do these advanced meditative practices and see if it affects the brain health scores. It really is a powerful tool to help you along your meditation journey and set the stage for some real magic. And if you want to go deeper into these practices or my techniques, I actually teach this step-by-step in my five-day challenge and in my eight-week courses. I'll link those programs below. And I will say that if you're just starting out or have been meditating for decades, remember, the Muse is an excellent training tool. It's a priming tool, and it can train your brain to focus so that when you go inward, you can ride that focus into these elevated states of bliss, clarity, and insight that you never thought were possible. And what's really exciting for me is that I've been combining this lately with red light therapy that actually has a neuromodulation component. You can pulse red light at certain frequencies to coax your brain into elevated states of beta and gamma or build a great baseline of alpha. And there's all types of variations in between. So it's a really exciting time in the field of meditation with neurofeedback training, brain tracking, and brain intervention tools that you can use at home. If you'd like more information on that, click this video here and I'll see you on the other side.